Correct. <clears throat> Io vivo uscita se random. Come? This works. <clears throat> yes. Good morning. With the help of Hashem, we are learning today's three Prakim Rambam. Hilche Shabbos, Prakim Chavzayim, Chavches, Chavtes. Chavzayim, Chavches are going to be the Prakim that speak to us about Chum Shabbos, beginning with Pedic Chavzayim. That's going to introduce the concept of Tchum Shabbos, Shito Saramam in Tchum Shabbos, that Tchum is Doi Raisa, the bigger Tchum, it's the smaller Tchum, that's with Rabbanan, as this will continue in the next chapter, when the Ramam is going to describe to us exactly how do we measure, from where do we measure the Tchum, but let us begin this chapter, this chapter, Pedic Chavzayin has 17 halachas, beginning with halacha Aleph. Hayoi Tzichutz L'Tchum HaMedina B'Shabbos, if a person goes beyond the word Tchum, we're going to use the word Tchum, the word Tchum means a boundary, if you go beyond the boundary of the city, again, how do you measure the boundary? What's considered the outside of the city? That's next chapter. The concept, when you go beyond the Tchum, you're high of Malkus. And how amazing is that? In other words, everyone associates Chil Shabbos Midoy Raisa with the Chiv Skila and Kharis, which is correct. But that's for the violation of the Ovis and its Toldois. But there is, according to the Rambam, we're paskening over here, that there is a biblical obligation of not going beyond the Tchum. And if you do that, you're violating the doi raisa, a doi raisa connected to Shabbos. For this, there is no karis, there is no skila. It's like any other violation of Allah, Yechayv Malkis. And where do we have that? Shinemar, it's not called a malacha, but the Ramam is quoting from, uh, from Bishalach. And that's different ways of, of teaching the Pasuk. But we're paskening that when, when, when Moshe Rabbeinu said, al ish mimikoymei that's in reference to receiving or to retrieving the man, it's not only because the man did not fall on Shabbos. And not only that even if the man were to fall on Shabbos, you may not transfer it. The way we are paskening, the Ramam is paskening, the al yetzi ishman mekoyme means, forget about the man. You can't walk out the, outside this boundary. And now the Torah says, be mekoyme from your place. So mokoyme zeh is what we call the Tchum Shabbos. Now, Says Rambam, even though the trader did not say what is this boundary, the Chachamim Ha'etiku, that means that they had a transmission, that means it was all from God, that this Tchum refers to going beyond the 12 mil. People don't confuse a mil and an amma, right? Every mil is 2,000 amas, or 2,000 amas is one mil. This is 12 mil. And why is that connected? The entirety of the Machni Yisrael, and the Kach Amalehem Moshe Rabbeinu Loi Seitzu Chutz LaMachnem. Now, Medivrei Soifrim by Rabbinic Law Loi Yitzi Adam Chutz LaIr. You may not leave the city, even if you're going a much shorter distance. You cannot go only up until two thousand Amma, which is also known as one mil, which is a twelfth of the twelve mil. Avul Chutz LaPayim. If you go beyond the the, the two thousand Amma. Here, you violated an Isur de Rabbanon, the Ramam is faithful to his words, Asur, even though the Chayev doesn't mean Chayev Chatos, because it, it's not a sin for which your Chayev Kodes remains. You're not Chayev Kodes, you're not Chayev Skilo, but still Chayev Doi Raisa, Asur Mid Rabbanon. And Sha'al Paim, where did the Chachamim base this 2000 Amma? That is, as we'll learn in a different area in Halacha, that outside every city in Israel, you have to leave the Migdash Ha'ir, a open space, which totaled a 2,000 amma. So that's where the Chachamim, and there was 2,000 amma beyond the city, still cool part of the city. Baharai, every city has, has to have an open space around it in that amount. So that's the Tchum Mid Rabbanan. Allah number two, Nimt Seis, Lameid, Kumt Ois, Shemutar La Adam B'Shabbos La Halech Eskola Irkola. That the city doesn't count. You don't count down while you are walking in the city. You can walk in the city. Even if the city is as large as Ninveh, Ninveh then was a city that had more than a million inhabitants. That was a huge city in, the, in those days. That's independent whether the city is surrounded with a wall. So the city itself 
You don't even you don't even begin counting down this two thousand rabbinic amos. Even when you're living the city, you can go two thousand ama. Now that I'm write something very important, which will better or and in a more detailed way will be clarified in the next chapter. That it is mirubais kitavla mirubas. You you measure the city by squaring it off like a tablet. Now, when you square something off like a tablet, let me just give you one quick heads up that if the city generally, I know the city is not perfectly square, but if the eastern side of the city is more or less facing the Ruach Mizrachis, then you don't even have to realign it. In other words, you make a line on the eastern side beyond that 2,000 amma. A lot more details in the next chapter, and whoever has the chayenu, there are just a few pictures which, which clarify a lot. Uh, pictures like a thousand words in exactly if it's a round city, if it's a triangular city, but the concept will be is that we're very lenient by Tchomen. So if, if it's not straight, if one side of the city is not straight, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna align it, we're going to make a line which will extend it to the max, having even the most furthermost house within that line, and then beyond that 2,000 hamas, Kedesh Niskin as Azovius Bechal, rounding it in verses, making it into a circle, even if the city is circular, will also extend you're going to have the areas of the corners which are outside of the circle, but they are included in the Tchum Shabbos in which you may walk there even without violating the rabbinic Tchum. In the Yatsa Chutz Laopayim, if a person went beyond the 2,000th and not violating a Dayer Isa, so like any other violation of the Rabbanon, Maka Noisi Makas Mardus, until they walked at 12 mil. Avlam Yatsa Vihirchik Noir Yasa, Al Shnei Masa Mil, or another thing, Ad Zvolayad Bechlal. In other words, you could walk ad va'ad v'chlal. The violation is when you go beyond it, even if you only go one amma, another big chiddush, because we're going to learn about a person as kainah, his daladamas. Once you went to the, to the boundary, the rabbanan, the eraisa, so going beyond that, even only one amma, then if you went beyond the 12 mil, you're going to be loike, minatoid. Again, that's amazing. It's a, according to the Rambam, Yechayev, Yechayev Malkis, for Chilol Shabbos, which is unique when it comes to Tchumen. Halach no for, mm-hmm. for because the rule that's the beginning of Christmas, the rule of a carbon chattas is if the message of Chayv there's no Chattas for this violation of Shabbos. What happens if you're walking, but you are not walking on the ground, you are walking How is that even possible? Well, first of all, that's the whole discussion about Eliyah not becoming on Shabbos. Whatever, however you understand it, we're speaking about a possibility, a phenomenon that the Eliyahu is going to be flying. But here, the example that Amam gives, which is more down to earth, is Kagain Shukafats al Gabi Amudim, that people built small pillars. When I say small, it's not about the height. Well, it has to be higher than 10 Tfachim, but they're not wide and long, four by four Tfachim. They are narrower than that. And these planks are higher than 10. But the aim of Halachad Mehem Arba Tvachim Al Arba Tvachim, which means, as we learned above, the, the top of these pillars have the status of a Makim Tur. So you're walking in a Makim Tur, which will be very similar to Al Yanavi flying, so to say. Hareza Safeg, Im Yesh Tchum Lamayla Masara, or not. Avalam Halachal Makim Shesh Bayar Bar Arba, the Ramam says, this doubt is Dafke if you're walking on a Makim Tur. But if we built the Rishus Ayachid, a halachic rishus hayachid for Shabbos. That means that you build a, a platform and the platform goes for miles. The platform is four by four tfachim or more, even though it's all a mile of masada, that's called going on the tchum. That's no doubt. That's like walking on the ground. It's not because you're walking in a rishus haradim. La mile masada means that you are in a mocking tour. That's where there's a suffix and the yesh is or tchum sham without an Now the Ramam doesn't say what we do with that suffix. But L'choyra, following the Ramam's general rules that we already learned together, that when you have a Sofik the Oiraiso, you got to be Mahmud. You have a Sofik that Rabban, and you can be lenient if we're going to use that uh, model. So that's very good. It comes behem shuk to halacha alaf and base. That means going beyond, if you want to go beyond 12 mil, they'll tell you don't do it. If you want to go between the 2,000 uh, Amas, the 1 mil and the 12 mil, then you could. The Sofik the Rabban, L'choyra, halacha dal. Mi shisham as bedir shavam. You carried it out on some sort of raised thing Whatever. No, that was that was that was that was not on a walking tour. That was just a tefach. It was a tefach of airspace. So just that even if there's tumas atohim, it's not going to go up. So what we did learn, what we did learn, yeah. yeah. But this would not make a difference. And they never went beyond the tchum. Right. They went to harazesim. 
Okay. Halacha dal. Mi she Shabbos bedir shabamid. But if you took Shabbos in while you are in a enclosed area, for example, you were in a barn or you were in a corral, right? So it's not covered with a roof, but you know, but it's surrounded with a fence. Or you were in a cave. The chayyot zebehen. You are in a rishus ayachid. So just like the Rambam says that if you take Shabbos in the city, you only begin measuring or counting the two thousand amos once you leave the city. If you are in a encircled rishus ayachid out there. You have the same upside. You only begin counting the 2,000 amas once you leave that corral, once you leave that barn. And you don't deduct. You know, I, the thing has, a, I don't know, the thing has a, 100 feet, 1,000 feet. You don't count it. You only begin counting when you walk outside of it. Again, you make a ribu. Again, next chapter, we're going to learn how to make the ribu. Okay. If you take Shabbos in where you are in an, uh, an open valley, now, open valley means that you're not within walls. So, even if you did not intentionally decide this is where I'm taking Shabbos in because you fell asleep at 4 p.m. and you slept into Shabbos. So here we go. Just means you have four Amas. And from your four Amas, beyond that, 2,000 Amas. Now, here is about a person that had he or she been awake, they were planning to take Shabbos in out there in the valley. That's very important. And then they, since they were taking in Shabbos out, out of the city, so they have their place, plus 2,000 Amma. Now what happens, you have the 2,000 Amma, but you don't know where it ends. So we are very lenient by Tchum and the We Yes, you'll see, many halachas. So how do you measure it? Push it. Every step that you take is approximately one amma, because if you remember that in the Gemara, your foot is a half an amma, and the space between one foot and the other when you're taking an average step is another half an amma, which more or less, every time you take a step, you are throwing yourself further an entire amma. And that will be the Tchum Shabbos, Halacha 5. Now, guys, Halkop, there's Halacha 5, and there's going to be Halacha 9. They're different if you're going to pay attention. This is all about a person that was kind of shvisa, get used to these words. That means that you either intentionally, or even though you were sleeping, but had you been awake, you're, you were planning to take Shabbos in wherever you are outside of the city. So that is your place. Now you can go beyond your place for 2,000 Amma. What's going to happen if the 2,000 Amma already enters the city? What will be the question? Do we say, since the city was within 2,000 Ammas, since had I taken Shabbos in, in the city, I would be allowed to walk in the whole city plus 2,000 Amas. Once I'm in the city, I should now be able to walk to the entirety of the city. So the Rambam says that if the city is beyond, if there is a part of the city that goes beyond your 2,000 Amas, ignore the fact that it's a city. So I had taken Shabbos 1,000 Amas outside the city. The key is I wasn't planning to make it to the city. I took Shabbos out there in the field. Now I'm bored Shabbos day. Or Friday night. You know what? Let me spatzi it. Let's, if the city has many, many thousands of amas, which means that there is a part of the city that is beyond 2,000 amas, I may not walk into the entire city. I can only go up into 2,000 amas. And you end up in the direction that you walked. You walked. You didn't go beyond the Tchum Rabbanon. But you end up now inside a private domain. Half of the barn is beyond the 2,000 amas. Or the Medina. Half of the Medina is beyond it. You're not allowed to now walk in the whole Rosh Hashanah. You're not allowed to walk in the whole Rosh Hashanah, in the whole city. You can only walk on 2,000 amas. And Guys, you remember one thing. That's because you were not aiming prior to Shabbos to reach the city. You're starting outside? Is that the idea? We're starting it outside. We're saying, a guy was kind of Shavisa. That's the key. That means when Shabbos came in, there's a case that we'll have in Allah test that I'm trying to make it to my city. Alamad, push it, got dark. So the rule is, is that since I intend to keep Shabbos in my home, in the Medina, all really that needs to happen is I got to make sure that when Ben Hashemashos came in, I'm within the Tchum Shabbos. Then it's as if I took Shabbos in the city. As long as I don't have to walk beyond the Tchum to get to the city, once I enter the city, I'm like any other city person. Here, that's not the case. Here, the person was planning to be kind of Shavisa, be out in the, in the, on the road, in the desert, in the Bika, wherever he is. 
you take a still off 2,000 amas. But here there's a chumrah. If my 2,000 amas take, take me into the city, with the exception that we'll have in a moment, I cannot work more than my 2,000 amas. You don't get the, the freedom. I don't get the whole city, but there's a, there's a nuance to that. That I don't get the whole city. So guys, let's just use this as an emotion. I take in Shabbos here. And my intent is to be here. The city, let's give an example. I'm 500 Amas away from the city. The whole city, only, only working in that angle is another 500 Amas. So the whole city is included in the 2,000 Amas. If that were to happen, then if I want to go further than the city, the city only counts for four Amas. I do get that leniency. The whole city is only the old Amas. Even though my intent was to be Koinish Visa outside the city, if the Rishus Hayachid or if the Trum, the Medina, all of it, all of it is still within the 2,000 Amas, then I can also consider the whole city only the old Amas. But the moment there is even one arm of the city that's beyond the 2,000 amas, not only can I not go beyond the city, all of my amas are going to be eaten up, and, and that, which will mean that I may not walk in that entire city. Oh, the Ramam gives an example. I'm 1,000 amas away, which means and the city itself or the, has another 1,000 no, it's not beyond that. So since the end of the other side of the city is still exactly 2,000 amas or less, I can not only walk through the whole city, of course I could because it's within the 2,000 amas, but here's the Chiddush. Because I walked 1,000 amas until the city. The whole city is 1,000 amas. The Chumrah would have been, I can't even take one step on the other side of the city. So here we don't say that. Since the whole city is Nivla in my Alpine Mama, the whole city is only like Daladamas. So I can walk on the other side. Now, guys, people that took Shabbos in the city have a lot more. People that took Shabbos in the city can go Alpine Mama. But Epis, at least here I get something. But coming back, but if any part of the city, because if I'm working, if I'm going to Mizrach Lamaira, and you measure 2,000 Amas from where I'm going to Shvisa, if that is not on the other side of the city, that means there's going to be some part of the Rishosh of the city that's protruding outwards, then every single Amma in the city is deducted off my 2,000 Amas. Another thing. If the whole city, I, I walked 1,000 Amas, Nanny, and the city is not 1,000 Amas. The city is 1,000 Amas and only one Amma. Wants to emphasize not four amas, only one amma, only one millimeter. That's it. It's not fully contained in your two thousand. Then you only have the limit. I only have the limit, even though it ends the middle of the city. Ainam halach ba elf amma bilvad, not elf amma ve amma. Uvahu shu tashim al paim sheyeshloi. Now another important thing halach eches. Me should call some midosim bechatsi yoir in such a case, even though I'm taking not a lot of work beyond there. However. If I am in a city that has a Eruv, I'm in a walled city, I'm allowed to throw to the other end of the city. I'm not allowed to walk. But my item, which by the way is normally bound to my throne, since I am in a Eruv, there is no limits to how far you can throw. Now, Another case of a person took in Shabbos in this open valley, the Hikifu Nachem Echitzah B'Shabbos, and Goyim made an enclosed area. We learned that a Mechitzah that's made on Shabbos is called a Mechitzah, with the nuance. It should not be made for you with your, with your knowledge. That's example. Goyim made a Mechitzah. You happen now, now you are in a Mechitzah. So, like this, if the Mechitzah would have been made prior to Shabbos, what would have then been? The Mechitzah. Within the Mechitza, it's like within the city. You don't even, you don't even begin counting down the 2,000 Amas. But now you only have four Amas and then 2,000 Amas. But now the Goyim made a wall, even though it's called a Mechitza, as far as the laws of transferring is concerned, like let's say a Bikas Akadamalist, so I cannot transfer more than Dalad Amas. As far as that is concerned, I can carry within the Mechitza. But as far as the Dinam of Tchum is concerned, 
אף על פי שהוא בתוך המחיצה, right? I can only go 2,000 אמס from where I was coined a shvisa within there. However, what happens, just for example, if they built a, 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 a mechitza that goes even beyond the 2,000 amas. More than 2,000 amas. So I only can walk 2,000 amas, but since it ends, I'm within a mechitza. Mechitza that's made on Shabbos, generally, is called a mechitza. Like we learned above, I can throw to the end of the mechitza. But don't confuse Tchumen with the dinam of Ritzah. Umut le'latata b'chol ha'mechitza al adai zivika. Another nuance, another other nuance is, is that we're speaking about mechitzas that, that have within it the 2,000 amo. So that's really connected to the karpeth, which are other than them, that even though if the walls were made by the goyim, they also needed to make it the shame dira. Because if they did not make it the shame dira, then midrabanan, that also has a din of a karmalism, you cannot carry more than four amos. Point is, don't confuse Hitzah with the dinam of Tchumen. Halacha 9 differs from everything until now. Halacha 9 is the case that a person is taka Shabbos, not, they're not in the city yet. But they, they're not koina shvisa in their physical place. They're aiming to get to the city. Just, they got tripped up. Everything changes then. Halacha nine. That's the key. They intended to go into the city. Doesn't matter if they're coming on the ship by Yam. And the ship didn't dock before the, you know, before Shabbos came in. Or they're going on dry land. Doesn't make a difference. Caravan, shmaravan, car, doesn't matter. You're outside the city. Since your goal was not to spend Shabbos outside the city, you're aiming, let me at least get within the tomb. Because like this, you know you can go to the city. You're planning to spend Shabbos in the city. Now, if you hit the toich alpayim amo, karabal ir, karabal ir, Shabbos, even though you didn't reach the city, you only reached the city on Shabbos, you are unlike any city resident. Unlike halacha hey, gavall. Okay, halacha yut. If you're traveling to a city, your goal was to reach the city, and you fell asleep out of Shabbos. Similar to before, prior to you falling asleep, you were aiming to reach the city, and you only woke up on Shabbos. And when you wake up, you realize, I'm not in the city, but at least I am within the Tchum. So Halacha Yud becomes like Halacha Tes. Same concept, even though you did not have, so to say, intention when Shabbos came in because you were sleeping, but if you would have been awake, you would have so intended and everyone knows the emes. You know, I was aiming to spend Shabbos in the city, or I don't care. Many people, when they travel, wherever I am, I'm going to spend Shabbos. That, that will make a difference. Prior to you falling asleep, your intent was to hit the city. Unlike if I'm planning to hit the city before Shabbos, but when Shabbos came in, I was beyond the Tchum, then my intention is of no avail. Because then I'm not allowed to walk to the city. Now let's speak about what happens if a person broke the laws of Tchumen. And there's a lot of nuance. If you walked out of the Tchum, even only one Amo, you walked out, you got to stay there. You may not come back. You have to stay in that place. What is that I'm trying to point out? He's asking Akasha. If a person acquires his Dalad Ames, so Mela, if I went beyond the Tchum plus for Ames, then I'm out. And Amam is saying, if I only walked out one Amma beyond the 2,000 Amas, why don't we say that that one where I'm standing, I got four Amas? So back, going back, going back within the Tchum is still in my place. We don't say. It. Why not? Because when you say you have four Amas, then Amam is saying, if I'm going in that direction, I talk a half four amas from where I stop, continuing in the same direction, not backwards. So uh, my dalad amas don't include any part <clears throat> within the 2,000 amas. It's when you say that you're stuck there. Stuck there then doesn't mean that I can't move. When, I, when I'm beyond the 2,000 amas, I have four amas. But you know, where are my four amas? Not backwards, frontwards. So since my Daladamas is beyond the Tchum, that means I completely left the Tchum and I may not walk back. Now, another case. I, I was planning to spend Shabbos outside the city. Even only one Amma. Here, another thing. So why don't we say, okay, I got 2,000 Amas. Now, right, now I'm walking to one Amma of the city. 
And now you just said that you have enough. No, no, you have 2,000 amas. You have more than four amas, but that's behind you. You're telling me that every person has four amas. I'm giving you 2,000 amas. Walk back. And by the way, you really have 4,000 amas because you can walk back to the place that you took Shabbos in and you can go to the other direction, 2,000 amas. But you don't use Daladamas as we're here to say, ah, oh, now you have another Daladamas, you can enter the city. We don't say that. As we had an Allah, hey, now, and not, and not the whole city. Huh. You are walking into a city. Where's the boundary? One foot here, one foot there. Who got kicked out of the base madrash because he began to ask these questions? I don't know what was concerning this. Hareze Yukonisla. Then you can enter because it's considered as if the city is in your trum. We're speaking about the case here of Halacha Tess and you that you intended to be Kainish Visa in the city. Yeah, because Yab 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 Idramam says if you don't know if no one pre-measured, you take two thousand average steps. So uh, which foot are we looking at? Your back foot or your front foot? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then you can enter. I, I, no, it wasn't concerning this. I think it was no. I, I think it was concerning. Uh, I think the demo rooster that if a rooster is within fifty yamas of a hen, whether the blood, whether we say that it was uh, impregnated from the rooster. I think there was such a question over there. What happens if it, uh, one foot here, one foot there by the chicken? And if for some reason, and Tracer says, why was he kicked out? That's a typical uh, question. You have always all these shilos of a half foot here, half foot there. Okay, Now, be, if you went out without intent, or for example, Goyim forced you to go out. Here we have an halacha mental illness. Interestingly, that if a person was possessed with the Ruach Ra, which means he became temporarily insane in his, in his uh, throw of insanity, I need to walk around. I'm very angry. I got to walk. And you walk, you walked outside the Trum. Or you made a shaygig. Which is like Mesit with a difference. Here's the difference. If you take a winter with shaygig, you're not allowed to walk back. If you violated that rule of and you walk back, then you're stuck with your four amas. But if you only left the shaygig, and then the shaygig you returned, like if the goyim forced you out, they forced you back in, in such a case, then that's as if you didn't. If the Goyim placed you outside the Tchumar in a private domain, here also, here, these are the leniencies, Dafka, because you were removed the Shoigeg, you can move around in that area. And you find out that you're in it, again, if you went out b'mezid, even though you are in a Shosayachid, you only have Daladamas. If you are not the Shaygig, you are within an enclosed area. You can walk within that enclosed area. If you walked out B'mezid, even if you were brought back against your intent, for example, Goyim forced you back, or you became outside, you became imbued with a Ruach Ra'a that kicked you back in, it's still Eloi Ela Arba Amas. Even though you came back from where you were Koina Shvisa. Once you did something B'mezid, you're going to be penalized. A person who sets out on, on the Mediterranean Sea, you can argue, hold on. If I'm traveling out beyond the Trum, the ship left. So will we say, this doesn't matter where you, that I can, I can, only, I, I can only walk around four Amos on the ship. We don't say that. I didn't walk the maze outside the Trum. I was... Uh, with m- mindfulness, I was on the ship. But the ship went beyond the trum. So at least in the Svina, which is all I care about, I can walk around uh, freely. And everyone relies on this. It's very common. Everyone traveled. People traveled on Shabbos on the ships the whole time. That's the way people traveled in those days. In the good way, in the better way. You went out, you violated the Bishoyge. And then... And again, the rule is that a mechitza that's made on Shabbos, that I'm on Paskins, Shema Mechitza. So, yesh le lahawa kolaitza mechitza. Providing that within that mechitza, there isn't 2,000 amens. If I said, Chum Shiatsim, and I'm going to make Sassim, 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 
which is which which is within the tchum. And guys, everything is because we are speaking about a guy that left the tchum shaloy ladas the shoygeg. So we're matim. So now you can go back into your tchum. The kimushi yikana. He said yikio leyotza, which means you can walk within the whole city and even go on the opposite side up until the two thousand now. Halacha tazayin tazvav kol nishe ein loy lazos lemekoyim. In the case where you can't walk, and not walking means you only have four amos. So let's go back to our first case, guys. You walk beyond the city. You knew you're walking beyond the tchum. And then you did tshuva. Okay, I'm stopping. The four amas, like we mentioned, is in front of you. You have four amas. If you have to relieve yourself, you don't want to spend the whole Shabbos in the same dalad amas that you relieved yourselves. Then, it doesn't say how much. Go out of your dalad amas to a place that you're comfortable, that even if you're going to make it and not clean there, it's not going to disturb you. And then you can return. Now, here's going to be a lenient. Leniency. What happens if the, uh, if the best place for me to relieve myself is behind a tree, it's not in front of me, but it's back within the tomb. Oh, So now I, behead, I went out the, the Ladas. I'm a Kabul, the Oynish of Chazal. I got to spend the rest of the Shabbos there. Now I have to relieve myself. I'm allowed to leave my Daladamas in the place where it's going to disturb me the least. In that scenario, because I'm allowed to go back if that's the most, uh, you know, separated place. So here we say, at least over here, once you re-enter, you re-enter. I'm sorry, this leniency is only, only if you went out the Okay. Okay. Then I'm already said that, but then I'm gonna give many hatay. That if the going forced you back, or if you came back Bashoigig, or in this case, you needed to go back because you have to relieve yourself, then we say since you went back, you went back. So if you left the mazin, you're stuck. Allah Zayin, call Mishyatsu Bashus based in. For example, Adam that are coming to testify that he saw the Numu, and people were encouraged to walk. Beyond the Tchum, to Yerushalayim and Arkadish, to the Sanhedrin, the Chayotza Bahen, the Misha Muta Lotzis Lotzis Lodvar Mitzvah. You know, we had the Melchamas Mitzvah. You hear, you heard that Goyim are attacking a neighboring city. Yeshle Al Paim Ruch, Yeshle Al Paim Amal Ruch, Ruch, Bo Isma Kamshigiel. Wherever your destination is, there you have to tell. And furthermore, if your destination was a Medina, then you are like the people of that Medina. You have the whole city plus 2,000 amas to every side, which is great. Final halacha yud zayin, hoisa yoytze b'rishos, if you left with permission. And on the way going, you're in the middle of your trip. You've heard word that you're not needed anymore. The neighboring city was being attacked by Goyim, but uh, <laughs> other people saved them already. So it says that I'm, 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 you have 2,000 amas in each direction. And not what? Not like we mentioned, if you left even Beshoigeg without another step, you're stuck. No. Now, does it mean you can go back to your city? No, but at least you have 2,000 hours. If some of the tchum that you left from is now within the 2,000 hours, if I would, that's, that means less than 4,000 hours. I mean, some of the tchum of the city is within the 2,000 hours that I'm giving. Then I can mamish go back. Gavaldik. I came from a city. I'm only allowed to walk 2,000 amas. I walk now another 2,000 amas or less. That's fine. That's 4,000, not more than 4,000 amas. And now I discovered that I'm not needed anymore. So I have 2,000 amas to go back. That final ama is the last 2,000 amas from the city. Then I can still walk back to the city. Back to my original city. Now, that's, he's, he's writing specifically about this case because of weapons that we'll learn in a moment. First of all, when they did their mission, so I'm going to uh, the neighboring city to save them. But in that battle, I went even more. Wherever you ended up, you have 2,000 amas. Now, what happens? If we're speaking about you defended a, a neighborhood from people that are that are that are that are violent. So even though I won the battle, me telling me you got to spend Shabbos over there, now I won the battle. But they, the, my enemies can regroup. If they're gonna know that I'm gonna be there, I'm, I'm in danger. But once that, then I can walk where I came from. 
And more than that, they can even carry their weapons. Now, carrying the weapons is a biblical violation. That's because Pikuach Nefesh. Digmar said a story. What happened was is that one time that happened, they left the weapons there. They went back to their city. The Goyim regrouped and they went to where they thought they would be. They didn't find them, but they found their weapons. They took their weapons and they went to attack them. Never leave the weapons. We never abandon the weapons. As some countries do, we don't do that. You finish a battle, you take your weapons back with you. All right, Chabra Pedic, Koyach, is, this is going to be a, a very uh, beautiful chapter about specific technicalities of how, from where do you measure the Trump, people who have Chayenus, even though it's almost all self-explanatory, but if you have the Chayenus, you're going to go to page, I have page 104 and 105, these pictures will be, I the pictures to and we have the pictures for Kaven, and Kaven is awake, and Kaven is going to post it on the chat. So let's go. Peri Chofches has 19 halachas. How do we measure? From where do we measure? So it says, Ramam Aloch Alot, Kol Beis Dira, Shu Yitzim in Amadina. You remember the Ksugya? You know, the Ramam doesn't use these words here. I don't know why, but the Gemara calls this, Chazal called this Ibura Shel Ir. The word Ibura means like a woman who's pregnant, her stomach protrudes. So there is a certain uh, 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 allotted amount right outside the city, even though there's no houses there, that is still called the city. And if you have even one little home, as long as that home was built for people to live in Halachic, if it's within that Ibura Shalir, so we extend the city all the way until that hut, and then we still go beyond it, you still have a theoretical Ibura Shalir further. If it's exactly 70 amas and two thirds of an amma, or less, or less, which happens to be the side of a squared two saw that we learned about. Imam learned about it in the carpet, and the Ramam actually gave that measurement, or less. That little hut is considered part of the city. And therefore, when we said that if you're coin a shvisa in a Medina, you don't, you don't deduct the 2,000 amas from your door of your house, you can work the whole Medina. And then beyond the 2,000 amas, where do you begin counting the 2,000 amas? Beyond that little base dira. Now, I just want to, just to explain the chiddush here. You know, sometimes you have one such hut. The Ramam is going to make it clear that that one hut allows you to draw then a line. So even if you're going from another edge of that ruach, let's say this is going from, from west to east. I'm going to east. So here is where the hut is built. But the other, this is the only hut. I'm going to be going from the northern uh, eastern corner of the city. I have no such hut there. Even there, you don't start counting 2,000 amas from when you left the city. You align that with this little hut. You make a line here. And that's all within the city. And you only count 2,000 out of that. What happens if you have one, you have one such a hut? And then going in the same direction, prior to going beyond the 70 Amas and the two-thirds of the Amma, you have another hut. Many, many miles, many million. A is a kilometer better. For these dinim, everything is like part of the original city. And therefore, when you measure, now we have to define the base dira. A base dira doesn't only mean a home which was built for people to live in, but you have other halachis of a bias. For example, that house has to have at least arba, not arba, oh. arba means four amas. Four amas means that people can lay down in it. Arba amas, four by four or more. The gimel, the chain, beis Now, what about a shul that was commonly built outside the city? So a beis haknesses, it depends. Did they build a adjacent room in the beis haknesses for the guard, or for the shamash, for the chazan, for the rabbi to live in? That will make all the difference. If there's a basic knesset, or even God forbid a house of idol worship. But in there, there's a home for the for the priest to live in. Or you have a storage room. Storage room is not a bias dira, but in the storage room, there's a room for people to live in, or I guess you have a bridge. People had little under the bridge, there was a little uh, high school because for the for the guy who still rips you off, who charges you the tolls. He lived there, the or even in a cemetery. If 
שיש לו מייס דירה, or even if right now some of it became a ruin, it used to be a proper four-walled roofed home, but it fell apart. What, what do you have left? Three mechitzes? Even though there's no roof anymore. But there was or watchtowers and the houses that are built in there. Or in another case, there was an original house that had four walls and a roof. Now, there is, the roof is still there, but two walls fell off. Doesn't matter which two walls. Still shame by us all. In other words, if it's a natural cave that was not designated for, that's not good enough. But someone used that cave to build a base dira, call Elam and Sarfim Ima, all of that will combine to this Ibura Shalir, Imhoi Basai Shirum Abba Vishirayim. And Oisa Bai is how you'd say. Here the Ramam says, when that's only one house, but that extends the entire side. Royin ki ilu chut matua halpane call Amadina. As we explained, what is considered a structure? That's not good enough. It doesn't measure up to the standard. If the, even though there used to be a four-walled house with a roof, but now it became a ruin. And now what remained? Only two walls without a roof. Even if people are still living there. Or or a boy the sheikh am arva shoyver u baye shabasvina that's you another khidish e call e lo khayet sabam e mit starfen ima halakha hey khoya stay i yarzu smukhlozu now guys what happens if you don't have the house the fact that if a house would be within the 70 amas and the two thirds of the amma we would extend the city that's called the ibura shalir so therefore listen to this you have one city here and one city there going 70 amas and one amma and two thirds of an amma if the other city, if you were to walk 70 amas and two-thirds of the amma, if there's any overlap, even though, even though there's no house built. But since if a house would have been built there, it would have extended it. And two of these two cities, these two neighboring cities, have this one amma that overlaps both of that measurement. This in itself combines both cities. So if I begin Shabbos in this city, I can go to the other city, walk the whole other city, and only begin counting down the 2,000 amas when I leave the other city. If you got it, there's 141 amas and one third, which is 70 and two thirds times two or less. Actually, they, they kiss, but they touch. That already combines both cities, but it says, anyone living in any one of these cities, their city. The other city, and they only begin counting down two thousand hours when they leave the other side of the other city. Now, you have three cities. You have to triangulate them. It's a triangular, so they're not aligned. So, first of all, go to the middle one. Any way you need to travel to the to the to the one to the right and to the one to the left. If you have two thousand amas or less, they have. In other words, these two cities are within the trum. Now, if you have in between the two outer cities, you have to make a triangle. If you have, you know what we're doing now? We are doubling the share. So 141 and a third times two is 282 and two thirds. So if you have that or less, you make believe as if the triangle, as if the dot, that you can triangulate, you theoretically, you halachically, you put it actually in between the two cities, allowing for you to have in between that imaginary end of middle city to the beginning of the other city, 141, two thirds. And from the other end of this imaginary city that you extended in the middle, from the other side, 141 and two thirds. So then all of them become like one city. How great is that? All of them become which means we're not speaking about transferring, we're speaking about walking. I can walk to anyone that I want in any way that I want. And not only that, I, I have beyond any one of the other cities, beyond that, another 2,000. Now, another detail about a city. Think about it, forget about homes. What happens if it's a walled city? People would think, oh, that's simple. <laughs> if you create this imaginary wall, when you have this uh, bias, be Buddha Shalir, then if the city is walled, for sure, you only begin counting from 
the wall. No, it depends where houses built first or the, the walls were built first. I don't even care that the city was walled because people were planning to build homes in it. If they built the wall prior to building the houses, you only begin counting from the homes. Now again, if you have another home, um, correct, but that's how we has that's the point. And if and if I it's all if you would get to count from the walls, you would be able to go further. We don't call that the edge of the city. But if people settled in a city, and after you have a settlement, then they walled the city, even though they built the walls not at the edge, they wanted the city to be able to grow. Since there was a ear and this was made for the ear, that means the city goes until the wall. If a city was either um, a rectangular, you know, it's, it's a square, whether the Oirech and the Oirech are the same, but it's lined. So then it's easy. If since when there's a rectangular or if it's a, um, if it's a square, the point is it's not a circle, it's not a triangular, it's not a pentagon. You have four corners. Then when you say you have 2,000 amas, so there's the Ruach of the Oilam. Ruach Heishel Oilam means the Mizrach Zayt from the belt, the might of side of the world, the Tzafan of the, of the world. The Dover, you, don't, you don't go by the world. You go by the city. So if it's this shape, so if it's like this, or if it's like this, you understand? Or if it's like that, I, I don't need to know which way is Ruach Mizrach is. There's four corners. So there's a line that's going in between the four corners. And I go not on an angle, which would give me less space, you understand what happens if I go on an angle? Just think about this. If I'm, if I'm, if this is the ruach, even though it's a city that doesn't fit the ruches of the world, doesn't matter if there are four corners. I measure straight, perpendicular, not on an angle. If I were to measure on an angle, I would measure two thousand amos. I would get two thousand, but it would be much closer to the city. You know, really, the cheshbon is. We just learned that, right? If you have four by four, then the then the diameter we learned is five point six. Or let me go in the reverse. If, if, you, if, you're going, if you're going this way, it's either going to be uh, 2,800. That's the same cheshman. Or if, I can't, if I'm only measuring 2,000 amas, I think I'm like 1,450. If I measure 2,000 amas on an angle, I'm going to end the 2,000 amas, but it's really only 1,450 be'erach. But you go, go straight. And no, even I'm though... I'm saying that we go straight. Go straight. And even no. though I'm not going straight towards the east, because since it's a four-cornered city, then you use those lines of the city. Masha Enkin, if you have to make it first into a square, then you place the square. That's the halacha, very simple. But if the city is circular, then you have to make for it corners, which is, a, which is great because you gain space. But the moment you make corners, where do you place the corners? Where do you make the box? You have the city is in the box. Then you align the box. Now, it's not only if it's a circle, if it's right, if it's a triangular, or if it has five corners or six corners. First thing you do is, is you square it off, which is a great leniency. You know what it means? It means that sometimes you get a lot more than 2,000 numbers. Think if you have a triangular and the bottom part of the city is very wide. And you're living in the top of the triangular. You don't get 2,000 amas. If you're going to these two, say, get much more than that. Because first you make a square. Then you begin counting the 2,000 amas. When it is squared off. Oh. Now that you are squaring it off, we just spoke that out. If the city is already square, I don't care. Ruach Mizrach is Ruach Tzfeinus. You follow the square, the line of your city. The moment you're making a square, then you actually manipulate, you make this imaginary halachic square aligned with the Ruch HaYisraelam. And by the way, it makes it a lot easier to measure. Today, we have a compass. Measuring is not so simple. Because like we mentioned, you, you, you don't go you don't go in the, in the horizontal. You don't go... You don't go um, Sideways. sideways. Yeah. Going sideways will lose space. How do you keep a line? <laughs> At least if you're using the Ruch HaYisraelam, people who know how to do that, it's a lot easier. 
I know today with modern technology, the whole thing is easy. Measuring land was a big chachma. It was a big chachma. We're going to learn about it. Halach eches. Hoise rochava mitzad echol v'ksara mitzad echol. So it's a square. But here also the Ramam says, it doesn't matter if it's a square, but it's not the same. If it's a rectangular, that's fine. But what happens if it's not a rectangular? So it's like four corners, but the space between the two bottom corners is wider than the top two corners. You, huh? Trapezoid. Trapezoid. Again, you will, you will always broaden everything. Everything will be leniently. And only from the imaginary larger boundaries do you count 2,000 ounces. Gam is the Greek letter of Gam, which is like, like an L. Like it's a half surface upside down. It was made like a bow. Right. So now, if if you want to use the Chayenu's picture, guys, I'm gonna just put it up here. This is really a great picture. I just I hope everyone can see it. So here you go. So in both cases, look at the Ramam's rule. If the edges, if the edges are within four thousand amas, then you get to make this imaginary line. And even though you're living here on the top. You only count 2,000 amas outside the line. And the same thing with the L. You make this imaginary line and you only begin counting the 2,000 amas beyond this imaginary line. It's very simple. In both directions? In, in, in the, the other direction, direction, you don't have to in this, in this case because in the, in the top direction, you're not making this into a square. Actually, I take that back. We just said you make a circle into a square. So then there's another squaring that you're doing. That one is just right at the top of the circle. Yeah, that one is just on top of the circle. So if you're living on the top of the circle, you're not benefiting. You're not benefiting anything. Like if you're living in the outer parameters, you're also not benefiting anything in this direction. Okay. Um, where did we go over here? Yeah, I know. I just lost my place. Okay. So test, right? No. I'm sorry. Ches. So if it's like a gam or like a keshes, imagine. In other words, look at the the coolers. You're giving yourself not 2,000 amma. It's as if everyone can walk 2,000 amma, and the guys from the other side are walking in the opposite direction, another 2,000 amma, as long as they meet. No, as long as they overlap. It's less than 4,000 amma. The yesen yes, is the picture that we show. If it's even 4,000 amma, which means that they kiss each other, but they don't overlap. You know, that means that, you know, that's, that's, that, that's the Keshus means, I don't want to lose my place again. That means that if you're living in the top, in the top part of the city, then you only get to measure from the, from here. And if you're walking in this direction, then you only have 2,000 amas from the edge of that area of the city. Halacha number nine. Now guys, you have to hop what's going on over here. I'm living near a river. The river aligns with one, with one side of the city. I want to walk 2,000 amas on the other side of the river. Now, obviously, if, this, if the river is taking up the entire width of the city, how am I going to get there? But I can walk around it because I can walk here within 2,000 amas. So imagine it's more or less aligned with the city, but I can walk to the side. I can, I can walk out, and I want to get to the other side. So how do you measure that city? If they built a sidewalk, but not a sidewalk, a boardwalk, a halachic boardwalk, which allows people of the city to go all the way up to the river, the whole river is considered part of the city. And therefore, when you are measuring the 2,000 amma, the, the, the river is in the city. You only begin counting once you reach the other edge. So you have a river. Dake is a dak. Maybe that's why the Goyim call it that. Dake means some sort of, you know, dak or boardwalk, something that allows people to walk all the way up there properly. And the key is that it has the width of four amas. It's a proper boardwalk or larger, and it's going on the bank of the river. Why was that put there like a dock? Kadeshi Yamdu allowed for people to be able to walk on it and to make use of the river. You want to go fishing. It allows everyone to walk to the river. We include the entire river inside the city. And when you measure the 2,000 amas in that direction, you only begin measuring once you hit the other side of the river. That's all because you built a dock. But if you don't have such a dock, if you don't have such a boardwalk, you know, what's the last house in the city? Imagine, 
You can't even go until means once you're walking towards the dock, you are already eating up your two thousand amos. Even though you have a, you can walk around it. There's a bridge over it. it doesn't matter. The, the city ended where the houses ended. And min al The nachal is within the two thousand amos. Fish, fishing on Shabbos. No, no, it doesn't. I'm not fishing on Shabbos. It, it means that this nachal, the city made something which allows them to make use of the nachal, since they can use it during the week. So it's part of the city. Halacha ten. Guys, Yosh from today would be RVs. Our, these huts that the Ramam is speaking about are huts that were not left in that location permanently. They would, they would make this little hut. They would every now and then move. What did we learn in the beginning, in the last chapter? That if you don't, if you don't have a city, you basically have your Daladamas or your uh, Ba'ara and beyond the 2,000 Amas. What happens if you have a whole group of these RV, an, what's it called, an RV park? That's a great example. So do you measure from your RV? Or if the RV park takes up a whole square mile, then you only go outside of it. That's because, that's the key here, guys, in the Gemara, because these huts don't have a Kviyus Makam. They were not built for them to remain there. It's not because it's flimsy. It's because they themselves will move it. But, but, that is fixed. That's Kavu B'Mekayma. Which, by the way, I think most RV parks have some structures, right? How much structures? That's the key. Three Chatseris. Each one of these three have two houses that are fixed. And then around it, you have all of these little RVs. All of these little huts. Then since they are extending that center of the RV park, Hukvu Ukulam, then we consider the whole thing a city. And all of the lenience we learned before we do over here. If they're not set up in a perfect square, then first you make the square. And then everyone gets to walk beyond any direction of the square, 2,000 amas. How great is that? And by the way, that's not going to be the dinner of, of an RV park. I'm sure every RV park, not every one day, but they have these chatseiris, right? They have these chatseiris and they have bathrooms there. There are certain fixtures. If you have three chatseiris, each one having two houses, then it gives a dinner of a city. Halacha Yudalov, Ein Moedidin. Now we're learning how to measure. We're going to go through this quickly, but this is really fascinating halachas. Just to say like this, today, even on the street, you see people with the lasers, they're measuring. It's a big chachma to measure one. The chazal wanted, and they knew, they knew that even if you're using this flax cord, which does not stretch extraordinarily, um, there is a certain amount of stretch, which will create a leniency. But as long as the cord that you're using is 50 amas long, which means that they want you to measure it 40 times. Even though there is a little bit, it's going to go a little bit beyond 2,000 amas, that's fine. But not, if, you're going, if you're going to use a smaller cord, then you're going to get more stretch. And they didn't, they didn't want you to use that. When you use a cord, there's a downside that sometimes one can allow the cord to sag. If the cord were to sag, then you're losing a little bit. So they concluded they want you to use the 50 amma cord with the exception of when you have to measure either a hill or a valley that you cannot go over. There's a din of mekadrin. We'll see soon what that means. When you're mekadrin, you're going to use a cord of only four ammas, much shorter cord. If not, it will be, you'll be completely off. So let's read it inside. Beginning from you, this goes, I think, almost until the end of the page. Kalocha, you know. Ain, um, yeah. In principle, the ropes have to be 50 amma, and not more and not less. That's key. 40 measures. And another detail, the material of the cord has to be out of flax. Look at the words of the Ramam. I remember this because don't think that those cords didn't stretch at all. Every When you measure, you're schlepping a little bit. They don't have the materials. Today you have metal. Today we have, you know, even when every, every person have a building to have these wound up. They didn't have metal then. Metal was a hard thing. That today a tape measure is going to it. If it's a tape measure made out of metal. So even though it's going to stretch, so they tolerated the stretch, but they didn't want you to do it more than 40 times. Now the problem will be if the gland is not flat. Just like we spoke before when you go in an angle, that's also called an angle. That means if I'm going to go in the valley or over the hill, I'm really losing space. And we allow us to be lenient. In scenarios where the area in the valley or on the hill is too inclined or declined so people don't make, make use of it, then you can just go straight straight through it. That's the, that's the soul of what we're going to be learning. 
Yigiel, a guy, if you come to it, now we're going into a crevice. If it's 50 amas or less, we're speaking about a very, a very steep, and you don't have to measure inside of it. All you need to do is put the measure rope over it. That's the best thing. But when are you allowed to be mavliya? There is a limit on how deep it is. I want to tell you, uh, there's a whole, Abbas uh, if I remember correctly, means 2,000 ama to go down this side and 2,000 ama another time. It has to be a little bit less than that. If I remember, we had that discussion, not, not 4,000 ama just going down. This is still steep. Then you have, if not, you have to take that into account, which is gefrel. You lose a lot of space. Now, how does that work, Danny? What did we just learn above? Think about it. We learned that if you have a city built like a Keshes, then you can make this imaginary line. That's more or less what you're doing here. You're making the line above it. But you're using that line not to go up to the heavens. You're going over. You're mavliya. That you are allowed to be mavliya, all of it, is if it's very steep. How do you define very steep? When people build straight walls, they would have what we call a plumb line. A plumb line is it was a weight in the bottom of a string, and you want it to go straight down. Today, you have these bubbles ears. Today, it's so much easier. Then they estimate it. So if it's so steep that if you were to put a line in there, it goes straight down, that means it's, that means people don't use that. That is when you can be mavliyat. So I can ignore that space. Again, as long as it's not 4,000 up, but I can ignore it. Avol. So it's like a steep, but it's not straight down from the middle. Oh, now you're not allowed to be mavliya. or less. Even here you can be mavliya. It's amazing. I know some of it you have to think, but if it's more, if it's if it's more than two thousand, then you got to measure it. Okay, halacha yud gimel. Now, how do you measure it? We're going to get to that in a moment. Magai Mukam means it's, it's, it's a very shallow valley. It's very shallow. Forget about that, the plumb line. People go there the whole time just because it's not perfectly straight. Then you have to be Makadar of We're going to explain Makadar in a moment. It means you have to measure, with, but you still get a leniency. The leniency is, is that if I were to measure all of the land, I would eat up the 2,000 amas quicker, quickly. We're going to push it to explain how they did it. All right, I, can, I don't mind. I'll explain it now. The Ramam uses the example when you're going up. The same thing is when you're going down. So here, here we go. Here I'm going to use a much smaller rope. Here you will need to have two people. One person stands on the lower part. And they put, and one person stands on the higher part. Whichever direction you're going, whoever's on the higher part is going to put, I think, the four armor rope by their feet. They're going to hold it by their feet. The guy that's in the, in the lower part is going to be put at the connected Leboy which means the rope is more or less going to go straight. And you, then you add together the four amas by four amas by four amas by four amas by four amas, even though we mentioned before that when you use a, every time you use a measure, you end up stretching it. There's no better way to do it. But you have to measure it, but you get to deduct, you benefit the incline part. That's called mekada. Hoya gei rochav chamisham, another challenge. Even if it's very steep and you are allowed to be mavliya it, how are you mavliya it? The rope is only 50 amas. If the width from this edge to the other edge is 50 amas or less, what happens if the width is 60 amas? How are you mavliya it? So here I go. Guys, I'm measuring from the city 2,000 amas. Here, here you have, a, you have this gay, and, and, and I can it's very steep. I can put a plumb line in the middle that's going to go straight down. It's not beyond 4,000 amas, so I'm including it in my measuring, but it's 60 amas from this edge to the other. I'm going to walk in that direction or in this direction. At a certain point, this crevice becomes narrower or is non-existent. Measure there and approximate. You see, I'm here, I'm there. Do that over there. You get it, Danny? I hope it's clear. Once I go to a distant place, align to it, and I make the measurement over there. There's so one you catch. Over there until 20 hours. No, 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 no. In other words, there's there's a gap here of 60 yamas. But the, if I'm going to go more with Sutton or Ladarin, that that valley at some point, this crevice will become narrower. So measure over there. 
And then a, and you're going to measure once and twice because it's 60 yamas over here. So, you, get, you know, that's a big chachma to do it properly. And then just keep on going. And, and then come back. So you're approximating. There's one, one nuance, and that is, is that if the deer that has a narrower crevice, so I can use the 50 ama measuring stick, is beyond the Tchum Shabbos, don't even go there. Because here there's an issue that someone is going to see the measuring people standing over there. They're going to think that that's included in the Tchum, even though they were only doing this approximation. So as long as wherever they're going to be going, because there the, the space is less than 50 amas, it's not beyond the Tchum Shabbos, that's how they even though it's going to be by approximation. Go to another place. But soifa connected us with But soifa means you're you're mamish. You're looking. Ah, I'm, I'm I'm on this line. I ended up on that line. Now walk back. Halacha fourteen. If you reach a wall. Now, guys, I want to tell you something very simple. When you learn this halacha, you get trapped here because you think what's the issue? A wall is very steep. What did we learn? If something is very steep. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't measure the incline or the decline. You only have to measure the width of the wall. Big deal, so measure the top of the wall. The problem here is, is that the bottom of the wall is very, very wide, and the top of the wall is very narrow. And we try not to use these little ropes. We're using 50 ama ropes. That's, and we're trying to stay faithful to that. So what do you do? You don't say, well, make a hole in the wall like this. You'll get it perfect. That you don't have to do. Elo oimed rachboy. Oimed means you approximate the thickness. And v'hoi l'chloi. People ask, why approximate? Take the rope, go to the base of the wall, and just go through. We don't do that. In other words, we're trying to avoid using a rope in any space less than 50 yama, unless you don't have an option. Then you're, then you're um, mekader. And when you're mekader, you use it because every time you use a rope from here until there, you're going to be stretching it. You're going to be sagging it. Better to estimate. That looks like it's like four tfachim. Add it. If, you, if the wall can be used, it has to be measured in an exact amount. Now, how do you do it in an exact amount? If it's a plumb line, then you have to measure it exactly. And yeah. Measuring exactly means you're going to be using only a little part of the wall to measure it. Halacha says, uh, if you come to a mountain, a mountain is the opposite of a gate with the same rules. Not decline, incline. If it's so steep, I know we learned other shiurim that are even steeper. It's not like that, but within, within um, five amas, you end up going up a height of ten tzvachim. Then, like we learned before, you mavlia it. Now, guys, it's very easy to be Mavlia, a valley. Here's a valley, guys, my cup. Mavlia means one guy stands on this side, one guy stands on the other side. You go over. How are you Mavlia? You build it, you have to put a pole here. They put a pole here. Let's say the 50 yamas from the city ended here. Put a pole, put the one edge of the string on top of the pole. From one pole to the other pole, 50 yamas, which is where the string is going to end. The tops of the poles go over the mountain. That's that's perfect. If you can do that, I mean, the mountain is not that tall. But you're only mavlia because it's very steep again. If it's not that steep, you can't do that. Now, if it's even steeper, even steeper, you know what we get to do? You, you can approximate. Why would you have to approximate if if you're trying to put poles over it. Guys, the, it, we're, the mountain might be too tall. The mountain is too tall, then you can approximate. If you can't be mavliyayit, you're going to show you what you're saying. The poles are higher than the mountain, the tops of your pole. But the mountain, the width of the mountain in that direction is beyond the 50 amas. Here again, the kadre ma'at ma'at. And that's the meaning of chazal. When they say me kadre the haran, what does it mean? Me kadre ketzad. When you cannot be mavliya, here they allow you to use a rope that's much shorter. It's only for amas, not 50. The guy who's standing in the higher part is going to put it near his feet. The one who's on the lower part will hold it next to his heart. 
So the rope is more or less going to be going straight the whole time. Whenever you mavlia it, we said one option is that if you can't do it here, you go to a place far away. We spoke this out before. Don't go too far away that you are completely outside of the Tchum Shabbos because people are going to think that you are allowed to walk. Now that you begin to have that measuring land, what's called land surveyors, is an, ex, it's an expertise. You can only rely on the expert. He knows how to measure land. Once it was already established that the Tchum Shabbos of this city goes until that point. And for whatever reason, another expert comes and says, you know, let me reach, let me check that out. And you end up with two Tchumen which one do you follow? If the difference between them is not too much, as we'll describe, you follow the one that gives you more space to walk. We go lekula. Not that there was already a, a chazaka. You're measuring for the first time the tchum Shabbos, and you hired for some reason two experts. Never do that. You're asking for trouble. It's a guy is ill. He goes right away to two doctors. You can have two opinions. You always listen to the one that gives you more to walk. As long as the difference between them is not more than the Allah that will explain in Allah Yudchas. We spoke it out before. I'll just repeat it again. Once you already know how to make the line, imaginary line, the actual line, when you go out, you go in that direction in a perfect uh, right angle, 40, a 90 degree angle, which is great. If you're going to go measure in that angle, you're going to get the most you could. The moment you're doing it inclined, you're going to lose a lot of space. It's going to be eaten up by the incline. By the, by, so like we said, 2,000 amas is, is, is 2,800 amas. Or in the reverse, if someone is using 2,000 amas in incline, he's really going to end up around 1,450 away from the city. So if the difference between them is not more than that. So we say the reason why these two experts came to a different conclusion is because one of them, one of them measured it crooked. The moment there is a greater gap between them, then you have to measure it again. It's too big of a difference. Let's read it inside. When one of this bigger, let's try to argue. He began at a corner and he did it on an incline. And therefore, he measured 2,000 amas, but he only hit this um, at 1420. That's the exact number. He did it did it but the we don't allow for a mistake to be more than that, for the difference between the two to be more than that. If it's more, if he measured it and he, and he used the 50 Ava string and he did 40 times, if he did not do it straight, when he's going to hit really 14, 20 from the city, his 40th measurement would end which means you really have another 580. So if the other guy added up until 580 approximately, then we interpret that difference because one guy did it by Allah Soina and you're good to go. You follow the Echad Shariba. But, but the Yasser al if there's a difference more than 580 Amis, then one of the two really made a mistake. We don't know which one, then you got to do it again. The Ramam doesn't say to do it again. The Ramam says we don't listen to anyone. Halacha Yutas. Now, Afilo Eber HaShivcha. Since Tchumen of the 2,000 Amas, Midrabanan, we are lenient also in the following halach. If a Evet or a Shivcha, which are normally not kosher to be witnesses, they are believed to say, I remember that until here is part of the Tchum Shabbos. And you don't have to hire a new expert to measure. Another thing, when someone is an adult, they can testify that I remember that when I was a minor, everyone used to walk until this uh, mark, until that tree. The Soimchen Ali Dusibidavarzeh. Even though the Rabban Paskins, the shit of two of twelve mil is midoy raisa, but we're measuring the rabbinic measurement. Atkan tchumen, and now the final pedic of today, which is taka the longest, but it's very easy, like very like we're almost a big part of it. It's about kiddush and abdallah, and the beauty of the Rambam, the big kiddush of the Rambam that not everyone follows, is that the Rambam understands that the biblical mitzvah of remembering Shabbos is bechnisosoy ubi yitziosoy. Remembering means midoy raisa, using words. The wine is rabbinic, but it's equal achi of doy Okay. 
A painting of Tess has also 29 halachas, halacha alaf mitzvahs, a saving a total of Kaddish Yerma Shabbos bitvarim. We sanctify Shabbos how verbally, and that's based on the beginning of the fourth commandment, where it says, Zohoir es Yoim HaShabbos, remembering means verbally, not remembering in your brain, remembering by saying words. Kolemer Zohreyu, Zechiras, both Shabbach and Kiddush, words of Praise and words of sanctification. And with Sarech, Lizoy, Chreyu, guys, this is Midoy Raisa, both in the beginning of Shabbos and at the end of Shabbos. And that's what we call Bichni Sasa, is through verbalizing what we call Kiddush Hayyim, and what it leads by verbalizing the Havdalah. Now, so before the, before the wine, the wine is Midra Banan, but now you have to verbalize it. So the first thing Chazal, the way the Raman is Masadim, doesn't add the wine. First he says, what do you say? Not everyone should make up their own words of Shabbat and Kiddush. These are the words. Base. V'zehu nusach Kiddush hayoyim. Baruch atoh Hashem elekeinu melechoyelam. Hashem Kiddushonu v'metzveisa v'rotza banu. V'shabbat kotche b'yahava. U'v'rotza in hinchi lanu. Z'ikhari l'masa v'reishis. T'chil l'mekro ha-koydish. Z'ikhari l'tziyas m'etzroim. K'ivonu v'charto. V'sonu kedash l'mikol v'amen. V'shabbat kotche b'yahava. U'v'rotza in hinchi l'tanu. Baruch atoh Hashem ekadash ha that's the Nusach of Kiddush. V'zeh Nusach Abdolo Baruch Atu Hashem Alekeinim Al Cholam Hamavdol Bein Kodesh Ocha Bein Oil Lachoshet Bein Yisrael Amen U Bein Yoyim Ashir Lishis Mi Amaisa Baruch Atu Hashem Hamavdol Bein Kodesh Lachol. Now says that Amam Alach Adalit Iker Hakiddush is by night. By night means that Amam says Bikni Sosay. Bikni Sosay means at night. The Im Lekiddush Balayla Bein B'Shogeg Bein B'Mezid Then Mekadosh Lachol Lachol Yom Kulay. And that Kiddush that you'll make for the first time is going to be a biblical Kiddush. Similarly, if you do not make Abdullah at, at the end of Shabbos, Mabdullah Mocher. Mabdullah Ad, Soif. What's what what do you have in your Rambam? So, so whoever has the Yom Revi, just it was a mistake. Sometimes this is a mistake. It's not two Girsois. Until the end of Yom Shlish. But if, as we'll learn in today's Padek, in this Padek, you also make a bracha over fire that you only do on Matzah Shabbos. And that's the rule. The Gemara says in Psacham Kuvav that three days of the week are Shayachim to the of the Shabbos of Halacha 5. Asur la'adam la'echo la'lishtus yayin. From when it becomes halachically Shabbos until you make Kiddush. Similarly, Bechem Yishayetze Hayoyim, from when Shabbos ends, Asur la'i la'haschil la'echo la'lishtus la'echo 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 Can't begin a meal. Atche Yabdom. But what the Ramam is saying is, is that if you already began a meal, a meal, not drinking wine, washing meal, only washing prior to Shkia, then you can eat as much as you want. And Achei Abdul. However, with the exception of that you are allowed to drink water prior to Abdul. Now, don't say, I already broke, I already broke it. And therefore, since I ate, I don't have to make Kiddush anymore. Or since I ate, I don't have to make Abdullah. No, 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 you're still, you're still equally mechoyev to do it. And only then can you continue to eat. Halach avav. Medivrei soifrim. They added, no, it's the Nusach, it's like the Ramam says, Birch HaSamaz in the first three brachas is Midoy Reis. Even though Moshe Rabbeinu wrote it, Yeshua wrote it, David and Shleima. No, no, no. God says, Uberachto, the Chazal gave the words. But when you're saying those words, you're fulfilling a biblical obligation. When you're saying these words, you're fulfilling the biblical Kiddush. But then there's another nuance. There's an add-on to the Kiddush. And furthermore, when it comes, you know what's interesting? That some of the Kiddush we also make at night, but he doesn't mention that. However, when you make Havdalah during the prayers, after saying the words of Havdalah, even on a rabbinic level, you can do any malacha you want, but you can't eat or drink. That's where you have to add alakois. Mutaloi lasis malacha, afa pishalai yibdal alakois. Masha Enkin, guys, Friday night, Friday night, even before you said the words of Kiddush, you're also to do malacha independent of the Kiddush. So the Kiddush is to be matted eating and drinking. Making the Kiddush in the tefillah is not matter the eating and the drinking. He doesn't have to mention anything. Now, when you, now, oh, so now we added wine. Oh, you added wine, you got to make a bracha for the wine. But that's one of the arguments of Bishama and Basilo. So when do you make the bracha la yain? You know, your mafsik one way or the other. So we pask him, first you make the bracha, and then you make the kiddush. And by the way, the same thing with Abdullah. Another din. 
In other words, Kiddush is called a hefsik, and I might see if you're making Kiddush over wine. And don't think, since, anyways, as we'll learn today in Pedic, in Kiddush, I will mark him soda. I might as well get up once, wash your hands, make it. We don't, we're not allowed to do that. Kiddush, which means we're going to add the Yom Hashish in a moment. But before that, it began, it's a beautiful, the Seder. The Bracha is the Kiddush. Biblical Kiddush. The Chazal said, add wine. We pass in the wine is before the Kiddush. Okay, Halacha said, so Ketar, who also, was to the Keyach Kois, which holds the amount of eight of these or more. And we already had this before. We also mentioned that this thing is only if the cup is dirty, even though we are, we are careful regardless. But you have to clean it for inside and outside. And and another detail, you hold the cup in your right hand. And another detail, you lift your right hand above the ground, a tefach or more. Does that mean above the table? I would say that that means that I was just thinking that maybe that I'm, a, you know, you, if you would sit when you do Kiddush, and in Beramba, not in the in the European world, they would lay on the ground. So pick it off the karka. That means that you make kiddush. Uh, we'll see in a moment. And velo yisayev, don't even give your left hand to help. And yes, yeah, okay, we bring it off the table. And by the way, there's a machlekes Rashi Rabbeinu Tam one tefach or three tefachim. We have that by Kenyon, and then we pass. And I forgot who says what, but we lochumra we do three tefachim. Very good. But let's go with the Rabbah. So it's off the ground one tefach. And now you make a bracha like that, and then you're my kaddish. Now, so after Rambam, now there's a minute. So we're constantly adding, not in a way where you make a hefsi. Interestingly, right? The Rambam doesn't say Yom Hashishi. Someone is looking at me. And then you make and then Barachakach mekadesh. And let's go further. How much do you have to drink? Meloy lugmav. And And after everyone tastes of the wine, that's all the minic. And then you begin the meal. Another halacha in kiddush over makom suda. Was meant to skate sad. Oh, you kaddish over by is don't make kiddush here. Bias here means a room, and eat over there in another room. No, eat, make kiddush where you're having a meal. By the way, a meal doesn't need to be hamoitzi, but it has to be from the hamishas sabina. If you are in the same room but at a different location and you're making Kiddush in this corner and you're eating in the other corner, you're good to go. So now comes the Kasha. There was a minute Kadmoinim that every shul made Kiddush as we do on Chabad Solo. But here we have a meal. Where did it come from? Now, by the way, there are shuls that do this even if no one is eating there. But it, he's, it began because there used to be like we had in, in, in the Truman shops. We learned that a Beis HaKnesses, even though you can only uh, dive in the Beis HaKnesses, there was a side room Travelers would stay there and the, the community would provide food for them. And Kiddush was made for them. And whoever was in Shul would wait to hear that Kiddush. That's the way it works. So Kiddush was made in the side room, but it was made loud. And people in the Shul used to hear the Kiddush. They didn't leave the Shul. And now it became a minute in many Shuls that Kiddush was made. Yeah, you're halishing to have bread. Or you don't have wine. Then you are, you are in such a case, allowed to make Kiddush over bread. You know what happens? If you make Kiddush over challah, then you have to wash. And then, even though you're going to do the minig of saying, it's not called a hefzik. That's the key over here. Either if you want bread more than wine, or you don't have wine, then and your mevarech, Hamoitzi, maybe not to say Vayichul. Uh, maybe not, I don't know. You make Hamoitzi. And, and we already established that the Hefzik between the Bracha of Hagafen, the Kiddush is not called a Hefzik. You're Makadish. And then you break the bread and you eat it. When are you allowed to substitute the wine with the bread for Kiddush? Friday night. Abdullah has to be done over liquid. And again, the Ramam writes, L'chadchil on wine, as we'll see in a moment. Aloha Yud. Mishnah is Chavon L'chadush Aligayin Belay L'Shabbos. And v'shochach, and v'not lo yodu v'koydim she yekadesh. And you made, what's the issue? You made a alam tila sedoim. The Ramam says that tefillah shav is oi gavalt, is taking God's name in vain, like taking an oath in vain. So you know what you do? You don't say baruch shem kveid malchus alayim, but now you make kiddush over bread. Gavalt. And it's mekadosh ala pas, ve'enu mekadosh ala yain, achar shanot al yodu v'lasu'ud, because you made the brach in the tila sedoim. U mitzvah levarech ala yain be'yam ha'shavah, so another din. There's a mitzvah to make a brach over wine. 
all you do is you make the bracha prior to eating the Shabbos day meal. And that Kiddush is called Kiddush Araba. Kiddush Araba is al we call the blind man, the Sagi Nohar. It's like a euphemism. There's a lot of light. Kiddush Araba means many words. Meaning it's only the, it happens to be that everything that we added today in the Shabbos day Kiddush tak is a lot longer than the Friday night. But that's an add-on. The Kiddush of the day is simply make a Boyer Priya Gofen. Umavarech Boyer Priya Gofen Bovad. V'soy, v'soy se, v'achar kach yitol yada v'yisoy. And says that Ambam v'osur loy lo adam sheyitoim klum. You may not even taste anything. Forget about having a meal prior to making Shabbos Day Kiddush. And v'gam Kiddush zeh, even though it's only midr abonad, lo yia ela b'mokim su'uda. Because what does the Gemara say? Shekol ma shetiknu chachamim ke'ein. The Ayraisa Tikkun Yud Aleph Yesh Leilo Adam LeKadosh Al Kais Erev Shabbos Moed Yom. Before you're according to the Rambam, when you wake up to learn Chasidus uh, and it's a crack of dawn. You should already make Kiddush. No, you should eat until after the Kiddush. Yeah, so let's go. Let me let me go better because because, because because let's go back. The Rambam says you're not allowed to eat before you daven. I'm to talk about. You wake up, you're gonna daven, and then you're gonna. Can be time, or you can drink water. That Ramam says. We said you can even have a coffee, but that's it. So it sounds like even on, on Shabbos. No, yes. no muz. Ah, forget no muz. No, no, and nothing. You can be time, but that's ilchas ilchas tefil. We learned. Okay, Allah, you know. Everything is the real deal. The Ramam passes this way. Yesh leilo adam lekadosh al kais ed of Shabbos mibo adyoyim. Can you be mekadosh the yom early? Yes, you could. Even though that actual Shabbos did not come in. And we know again, the Ramam was, that that's really me plag ha That's what the Ramam is not going into the details right now. And likewise, here's the Chiddush. You can make Havdalah after plag ha even though as far as Hilcha Shabbos is concerned, it's Shabbos until it says. Okay, not that I've no times. You know where you know this is used? If a person is an Oynan, that's until today. The guy's an Oynan, an Oynan, during the week, doesn't make brachas. He's not bechuyev to, to make Abdullah. And uh, I'll tell you by, by me, you know, my father was buried the uh, Yom HaRavi. And I was too late. I didn't make Abdullah that week. And Rabbi Reichert told me later what I should have done is, it should never happen, is, is that then you daven mincha before plaga mincha on Shabbos. Listen to what you do. And that person davens mairiv after plaga mincha. Shabbos. It's Shabbos Kodesh. They make Havdolah ala kois without no Asian fire because it's still Shabbos. But then at least they made Havdolah and then they wait until the end of Shabbos and then, you know, no psalmim and no because Shabbos is still Shabbos. And afterwards, our oinam don't make, don't make, our oinam doesn't make brachas. That's the thing. No, you can't do psalmim. But let's go back. Another example, like a nursing home. What's in a nursing home? Because people so are not there. Mm-hmm. It's a great example. Okay, great, great, great. Alpha Pisha Daini Shabbos. She mitzvah zechira lo amra, ben vishas kniso asivit si yasai, or even ben koidam le shazu bimaat. You hear that Amma is marames. You can't do this noon. Bimaat, we know, means after plagamin. Allah, you base. Vish or yorkel ke ever of Shabbos. All right, this happens today when the put him is out of Shabbos. So you're having a meal. And even though I'm saying that because normally we're not allowed to eat out of Shabbos to give honor to Shabbos, but if a guy was eating, and the Kaddish Olav Ayoyim, it's Shkia. And he's in the middle of the meal. So here's the unique halacha, right? Play this map on the Kaddish. Play this map, it means you covered the bread on the table. You're not washing again, you're not benching, but you can't eat anything. You gotta make Kiddush. When you make Kiddush, you have to cover the bread. Uh, play this map on the Kaddish. And then the Goymer Sudas, and then make Birchas Amazi, and then there's Gay Daven Light. Let's go in the reverse, and the reverse is not so. If you're having a late Shalashudis, again, as long as you wash before Shkia, the Yotza Shabbos, and he's in the middle of the meal, you're not quite as anything to do, Abdullah. You can continue to eat, I don't care, on this and midnight. And the Noitel Yadav, that's my Machroinim. By the way, that kois, you're not allowed to drink. But you use the kois, many people use. And then, you make mandol on that kois. That's the way that Ramam says, don't drink it up. Now, if a guy made, there were kaveya su'ud on drinking wine. That was more chashub than anything other than having bread. Don't say that since we began a drinking fabrengen uh, on wine, not on mashka, on wine, it's chashub. So once we began that before shkia, you can extend it. This is only if you began hamoitz. 
and avada not for anything else. So it's people that chapa shalashudis after mincha Shabbos have to be careful to make sure that mincha ends before shkia. I know that there's many different shkias before someone's shkia. For you to begin a su'uda before shkia, for you to be allowed to eat as long as you want. And, and but if it's if, if you're in the middle of a drinking session, no, stop it. You can't drink anything before you make abdullah. And then and then you go back to your drinking. The sun take. I walk you give you ended your meal. What should be the right say there? First, here we use another cup. Don't use the same cup. In other words, you know what you can say? Make You're holding the cup. Right away, make Yiddish. Don't do that. Don't, benching Allah Kois is a mitzvah. Making Kiddush is a mitzvah. That will be an example, right? Don't, they, they say in English, don't kill the uh, two birds with one stone. We're not trying to kill anything. We, we, we want to get every mitzvah to give it its own chashivas. And the mitzvah of Birchas Hamazin, my friends, which includes making it Allah Kois, are two separate biblical mitzvahs. No, no, we're gonna because by Abdullah. No, 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 I'm gonna say that. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the difference, Danny, because by Abdullah, Mabdil, Amabdil, and Shwain, Amabdil without a Kois. No, it's Abdullah of a Kois is only going to be at the Rabbanan because we make Abdullah during Maidah. So now I'm not doing two mitzvahs do I rice on the same cup. I don't know. Right, leave, leave, let's let's hop it later. Uh, good vitamin. Which is eight o'clock. Halacha yudal. That has to be figured out, right? That Amam says to use the same cup. Straight up. What wine is good? Only a wine that's fit to be poured on the holy mizbech. Therefore, if even only a drop of honey, even only a drop of soil, a filu ketipas achadal in a big barrel, ain't makachin olav. Because on the Mizbech, we say this in Kabbalah every day. Kach in the whole in the in the, in the the Ramam lived in the West, not those Easterners. The Yesh Mishamata Lekadosh Olaf. However, people say, no, no, no. For Oimer Loi Nemer Bayayin or Rezal Mizbech only Elo Lohitz Yain Shereich Rei. You can't use a wine that smells bad or what? The Ramam doesn't want you to use wine. He's right now. Oi Megula Oi Mevushal. Because everyone is made that you can't use wine that has a bad smell. Avadim. You can't use wine that was left uncovered. Yain Megolim, even today, that we're not chayish for water. We're not allowed to make kiddush Yain Megolim for wine that's cooked. Ah, she ate that, that's for sure. That Amam adds, not only that, even a drop of honey is also going to pass on the wine. Halacha tezvav. By the way, grape juice can be without it being cooked. We'll see in a moment. It doesn't have to be mishtaken, but it has to be pre-cooked. Halacha tezvav, according to the Amam. Yain shetami tamchem. Guys, if it tastes one way and it smells another way, what is the dominant, the smell or the taste? Consistent. If it tastes already like vinegar, even though it smells good, tam is ikr. I know tam ke ikr normally means something else, but just that's an easy way to remember this halacha. Ain the kachin olaf. The ikr is the tam. The chen shemarim, if you had shemarim, that you put water on it. Afa pish ishbam tam yayin, ain mikachin alein. That's another thing. There, it's not about the tam. It's not substantial enough. If you put three measures of water and what comes out at the end is less than another, another equal amount, right? To say that each one is a quarter. If it's less than that, that means that there wasn't enough wine left in the, in the Shemarim. And that's why it's called colored water. It's not called wine. That's called wine, even though it's very diluted wine. And then you can make it a shan. Even if the keli was machzik many deviyasin, if anyone would drink from it, even only a drop, it's poigim all of that wine and you can't use the rest because it's considered remnants of a left of God. Guys, you know, you can correct it. That one doesn't speak about it now. The way you correct it is, is that you pour any amount of wine from the bottle back in the cup. That's important to remember because people do it a lot today. They have a big cup. They want to use it back. They could use it again. But first, take away the pagam. Halacha yudzayin. Ya yin shereichi reyach choyme. It's here the opposite. It smells terrible. It smells like vinegar. But it tastes like wine. Let's be consistent. The tam is the ikr. Gavaldi. Come and catch it all. The chen yain mazuk. It's diluted wine. Yain samukim. Raisin wine. 
could be used as long as the raisins had some sort of lachluchias, she'im yidrech hoisam, some sort of concentrated syrup will come out of it. The chen yain chadash migitoy, which is what we call grapes, that means it did not ferment. There's no alcoholic content in it, but it was not cooked yet. Then yes, mekachin olav. And therefore, a person is even allowed to squeeze grapes straight out of the grapes prior to shops. Right? And then that's it. And make kiddush on it. Now, if you have a Medina, it's a poor Medina, the poor man's wine is beer. Even though beer may never be used for kiddush, including Matzim Yom Kippur, because all of these are days declared by God to be a day of rest. That's the rule, guys. If you go to Kedusha, Hamura, Le Kedusha, Kala, you make Havdallah. So Matzim Shabbos, the Yom But you don't make Havdallah, the Matzim Shabbos, the Matzim Yom Tev, the Shabbos, because you're going to Kedusha, Kala, the Kedusha, Hamura. Halachi, you test. What's the Nusach of Kedusha, Yom Tev, Baruch HaTashem, the Kedusha, the Kedusha, the Kedusha, Asher Bachar, Mikolam. Gerai Memonu, Mikoloshi. Bachar Banu. Vigad Leinu, Verotza Banu, Vifar Einu. And then for every yom you add its own text. Now, if Shabbos is together with Yom Tiv, then you mention Shabbos when you make the Chasima. And what comes first, right? Tadr v'she'enu, Tadr the frequent trumps. Kedera she'choisim, but during the davening, which is mekadosh hashabos v'yisrael v'yazmanim. Halacha cha brosha ashana oim v'atitul lan Hashem lekinu v'yavas yom tov mekadosh azeh es yom hazi karin azeh zichro in teruah v'yahavos zechol tzias mitzrayim kibar avachat v'shani kedera shem kol amen udvarach avokenu emes v'chaim lad varachat v'shem melach al kol ha'aretz mekadosh yisrael v'yom hazi karin. And if it's Rosh Hashanah and Shabbos choisim, always putting Shabbos first. Makadash Shabbos Yisrael Yom Azikarin Kedar Hashem Chayim Betfilo Halacha Chafal Bilei the Yom Tov Makadash Ale Yain Kis Shabbos And if you don't have wine, or like we mentioned before, Kiddush, if you desire to have bread, then you are allowed to make Kiddush over bread. The Chayim the Yom Tov Makadash Kiddush on Abba the Rabbinic just the Bayer Priyag Gafin is done on Yom Tov the way it's done on Shabbos. Halacha Chavais Kaitzad Mevarchem Bilei the Yom Tov Shchalis BeEchad the Shabbos. In other words, the point is you're making now Havdala. Why? Because it's mikadusha kala, mikadusha hamura, mikadusha kala. But chila, might the yak nahas. First you make gefen, then that's the yain. Then you make kiddush, kiddush yontu. Then you make neid, and then you make havdala, which means you conclude with havdala. How do you conclude the havdala? Hamabul bin kodesh lo kodesh. Vacharkach mevarech shechiyano. By the way, the Rama in the brachas did not mention shechiyano. Because the Ramam in the laws of Brachas was mentioning Shekhiyano that comes on something that's Chodosh. And the Shekhiyano of Yantav is not because of the Chidush, it's because of Yantav. Ve'haraya, if you forgot to make Shekhiyano on the first day, you make Shekhiyano on the second day. And if it only would have been because of the novelty of Yantav, then the Halacha would not be that way. Halacha oh. Chavgim, call Leili Yantav. Umalal Yom HaKippurim, we make Shekhiyano. However, on Shvish al Pesach, eh, me varcham Shekhiyano, the play, it's not a regal bifnei atzmai like we see on Shmini Atzeres, Yak Bizar Keshav. Not for Shvish al Pesach. And you already made Zman with Chalas HaPesach. Halach Abdel, let's say that Rabbi Motsi Shabbos, first you make a baracha on wine. Right? He doesn't have the Hine Keli Shuasi. It's like the minute that was added later. And then you make the baracha on Psamim. Then you make the baracha on fire. The Ketz Mevarach Alaner. Remember that? Boire. Over here. You can only make the brach on the fire at You have to first derive benefit from its fire. How do you derive benefit from fire? Using it to see, to discern. Between the coin of this country and the coin of another country. But I'm going to have the fingernails. You have to have coins. If it was lit up for any idol worship purpose, and even if you don't know, the Ramam says that going that got together, if they were not the Muslims, if they were Christians, so that's Avaidah Zorah. And the assumption is, is that they're celebrating something for the Avaidah Zorah. As we learned before, Halacha Chavav, Yisrael in Hilchas Brachas. Yisrael, Shehid Likmo Evdi Kechalam Azolis. Oyevu Chavav Yisrael. 
Think about that. And once they lit the fire for the Avodah you took from their fire and made another fire. Yes, you can make a bracha on it. However, from other Avodah we care about the last one. No, we don't care the last one. From a Yid, I think if he would be doing it to his Avodah maybe he wouldn't have taken it from a Yid. Okay. If you're outside a city and you see light, there's light coming from a city. It's so lit up that you can already be machin be madbeil or madbeil. You can make a bracha there. There was no, there was fire there. So that, but but maybe they're going. You go after the majority of the inhabitants. We already had this. Why? Because those fires were not lit to give light. Those fires were lit to bake food. Those fires were lit to bake food. If you have coals that was lit for your uh, to give light, if you're going to put a toothpick in between it, it's going to have fire, right? That's called already enough flame. Now, guys, remember, you, you want light that was lit. In a Beis HaMedrash, they lit fire. But if there's also a Adam Chashem there, we can say that the fire lit in the Beis HaKnesses was L'chveda Beis HaMedrash and for the Adam, which is good for the person that, you know, to see. Im yeshom Adam Chashem Shomet Likim Mishviloi Mevarech Olov Shal Beis HaKnesses Im yeshom Chazem that lives in the Beis HaKnesses even though it's in a side room, we consider all of the candelabras that were lit in the Beis HaKnesses also to give a fly, and that's okay. Now, the Avuka La'avdala. Avuka means you don't want to have one wick you want to have more than one wick, like we have, you know, we call the Havdalah candle. Mitzvah min amufcha. If you don't have two, you're good. Vaharaya, what do we do when we go from Shabbos to Yom Tif? What's our minik Chabad? We don't, we don't even pick up the, we look, we look at the name. You don't need to have, you look at one name. In, in, normally, Mitzvah min amufcha is to have a, what we call a avuka. And the lab No, but they're not, they're not together. It's not an avuka. Very good. You don't have to look for fire the way you have to look for the other mitzvahs. That means if you're making Abdullah the Hasnish, 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 Talacha of Zion, or Shahutlak Shabbos, Lachayla, guys, in just a few more minutes. If you have a fire that was lit on Shabbos, Boyfriend Hamutin, someone was ill, a woman was giving birth, you are allowed to make a brach in it on Matzah Shabbos. Let me just say the words. The, the fire that you need, Lachatrila, was lit, Lachatrila. And it was not lit boyfriend that it was Machal Shabbos. You can light it after Shabbos. Even if it was lit on Shabbos, if you did not break the Shabbos with it, you can use it. How did they make a fire then? They didn't have, you know, they, they would take, they would rub things against each other. That's that's good. If you do it Shabbos. Shabbos. Actually, that's the way fire came into the world the first time by Adam. When it got dark, Hitaka used two different Flintstones or whatever it was, and he, and he created fire. But a Yom Kippur, we do not make the Boyd of or Aish on fire, only if that fire was lit prior to, and that's very important, like in the Shul, not, e- not even to take from the Oyr Shashavas. You make the Bracha on the Lich that was lit the whole Yom Kippur. Now, even if Anyam Kippur, it was you did not break him Kippur with it. It was lit because someone was ill, a woman was giving birth, right? But if, if it was lit Anyam Kippur, but it was lit by Eifen Hamuter, then you can make a bracha on it. Shahare Shavas, what the word do you have in your Rambam? It's printing mistakes. No, no, no. Veda. No, by me, I have the word Avoida. It's even on Yom Kippur, as long as it as it was resting from a Hill Yom Kippur, but it was done on Yom Kippur Behater, that's also okay. Final, no, not final, second to final. We have Yom Tov Shechalis Bemsa Shabbos. Yom Tov is the middle of the week. What are you saying, Abdullah? You're saying being the six days and the seventh day. Hello, Yom Tov. It's not six. You say that. You say, I'm not going to be in Kurdish, but you're saying, I'm going to be in Ashvi'i, Lashesh, Simeon, Maisa. As you say on Matzah Shabbos, why? Because you're not saying that Yom Tiv is, Yom Tiv is not six days on seventh day. You're declaring that God Almighty created Havdalah in the reality. And there is a Havdalah, which is between the uh, Shabbos is holy, not that today is Shabbos. This is going out of Yom Tiv. Even though Yom Kippur, we do make a bracha, but Nesha Shabbos, final Allah of Tez, 
Why do we make a bracha on Shabbos Matzah Shabbos Dafka? See, it makes sense. The candle. The candle is because on Shabbos you can't create fire. And by the way, that explains Yom Tif. Unlike a uh, no, no, Yom Kippur. Yom Tif, you should know you can create fire. Midoy Raisa. Midrabanan, you cannot create fire. But even Midrabanan, you can use a pre-lit fire. So you're sh- showing that now I can make fire. Shabbos and Yom Kippur versus Yom Tif. But some of what's unique on Shabbos? The Pnesha and Nefesh, Doi Eves, Litsias, Shabbos, the Shod Nefesh, which is the part of the soul that is the closest to the body. It's forlorn. It's uh, sad that Shabbos is leaving. So how are you in Samer the Nefesh by smelling something that smells good? To be continued tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last Pedic 